still playing with this Chinese diesel heater in an attempt to heat this 36 square meter workshop. Um, I have done a video on uh, trying to heat it late at night when it was cold outside. Um, it didn't really keep it, get it warm, but it was uh, more comfortable than not having it, shall we say. So it lifted up a few degrees, but not as much as I'd like. So now what I want to do is I want to look at heat recovery on the exhaust. There's an awful lot of heat goes out through that wall. So I've seen people use um, radiators. I thought about using a cast iron radiator, something with a lot of thermal mass that would slowly um, release the heat back into the room. Um, so what I, because ideally what I want to do is I want to be able to run this for a couple of hours, say, and then heat up a thermal store, thermal mass, turn this off and then be able to come in and out and still have a little bit of residual heat in here just to make it a little bit more comfortable because it can get pretty cold. So I'm not going to do the radiator. I've decided to, to try and build a sand battery. So I've got that. It's a 205 litre. I want to say oil drum, but it's not. It's never had oil in it. It's had a bag of fruit juice. So I haven't got that oil residue to deal with. Just needs a good old clean. Bearing in mind that's going to be inside and it's going to have the exhaust running through it. So don't want anything that's going to be uh, creating any sort of toxic gases. Um, but the first question I've, I suppose I've, I've got to find the answer to is how long an exhaust can we put on this? Because I think I need about six metres in there allowing for it to get from the heater to the um, barrel and then loop around enough that ideally the gases that are coming out are cold. And obviously it's got to get from there and out through that wall. So I think about six metres should do it. So today we're going to find out if we can run a three metre length and then if we can extend it to six metre lengths and does it affect the output and how this thing runs? Is it going to affect the mixture? Because um, a few people have said you need to go up to an inch and a half, whereas the, the, the uh, the current exhaust is an inch, 25 millimetres. I think the first thing I'm going to do, I haven't got the connectors yet, so I'm just going to use the exhaust to join it together with the existing exhaust pipe that's sticking out through the wall. And what I'm going to do, I think I'm just going to leave this kind of like this, because this is as bad as it's going to get from a bend point of view. So I figure if it can run through this, when I put it in this barrel, and the curves are a lot more gentle, there won't be so much of a restriction going around all these bends, because what we've got, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's seven bends on this. So if it can run through this, hopefully it'll be, it'll be all right on a six metre length, which um, all helps, because if you go up to half, or an inch and a half, this is about 15 quid. To do an inch and a half, you're looking over 100 pound to, for a six metre length, if you can find it. You're in a whole different, um, it's a whole different ball game but yeah I'm going to try it like this so it might look a bit funky but it's not going to stay like this it's going to have a gentle curve but this is for testing purposes it's all science so here's the plan put the silencer on the existing pipe and I'm just going to add this yeah, should we do it like that? add this to this now it's not ideal, obviously, because there's obviously a bit of a restriction there, but not too much. It's a fairly basic silencer. Literally, it's just a straight-through pipe with a bit of baffling around it. Um, but let's see. So I want to see a couple of things. I uh, want to see it run all right. don't want to see loads of smoke. And I ideally want this to still be hot at this end, so we know we've still got some heat to, to recover from the um, next length, because I don't think three metres will be long enough to fit around that barrel and get to where we want to go. So ideally this is still going to have some heat in it and it's not going to smoke and the heat is going to run all right and still produce heat. But let's switch this on. The heat is now on. This is the end we're interested in. So I'll put that like that. Hopefully this will highlight what you're looking at. Uh, it's going to take a couple of minutes to warm up but I'll bring you back as soon as that starts clicking. As soon as that fuel pump starts clicking we know it's doing something and then we should monitor that exhaust and see what happens and then it's just a temperature game then that's just started clicking it's a bit of steam i think that's steam hopefully it's steam there may be some um, oil on the inside of that pipe as well so we might see some of that but that's gone now so hopefully that's just residual oil from when it was made we might see some come off the sides of it even but so far, that all appears to be working as it normally would. Now 
There's no heat in the thing yet, but that's not a complete shock. Uh, that's steam, that's all right. That's the other thing, condensation, that could be a problem. Um, my plan is to go in at the top of the barrel and then go down and out and keep it so that any condensation can flow straight out the pipe. It's going downhill all the way basically because um, if you fill it up with water it's going to be next to useless. But that seems to be more steam than normal. Let me try something. I'm going to up the temperature. So I've set it to five now, so it's halfway. And if we pull this off. Not a lot of um, steam coming out of that. Now, is this something that, as that pipe heats up, you won't get as much of it coming out, or you'll get more of the condensation coming out, or is this gonna be a, an issue moving forward? Too much water in the pipe. Let's let that run, let that run and see what it does. So it's been running for about 20 minutes now. Uh, combustion chamber temperature is normal, so that's good. It's ticking away, it's on um, halfway, so it's on number five, gear five they call it. Not a lot of condensation there, or steam. There is water in this, the end of this, so condensation is definitely a consideration. I've taken some of the kinks out, because it kept wanting to fall over. Um, but there's, that's hot, <laughs> don't touch that. It's fairly warm there. Yeah. There's, there's heat there, I think there's heat to recover. I think once you get past three meters, maybe not so much, but you need to get it to the barrel. See look, a bit more condensation there. You need to get to the barrel and back out again. So I think hopefully the six meter test. I've got another section turning up shortly and we'll try that. Um, I might even put more of a gentle curve in the whole thing and try and have it running downhill because that last bit goes up a bit. Oops. Ow, hop. Obviously you're gonna clamp that in. That's made it smoke a little bit more. Oh yeah. I was getting a puddle, look. So yeah. Definitely want it running downhill. Right, okay. But temperature wise, combustion chambers, same temperature. Um, that has raised it up in here a little bit. But we've only been running for 20 minutes. So it seems to be working okay. I think the next test is to power this down, get the um, new section on. So we've got six meters in total and I'll, I'll think I'll make a rough coil to give it a fighting chance. Combustion temperature is 219 degrees. So that's about right. We'll see what the um, vent's putting out. This is degree C. I'm gonna hold it about there. See what this starts going up to. Hundred and three, hundred and four, hundred and five Celsius, which is two hundred and twenty-two Fahrenheit. Still climbing. There's a lot of heat comes out of this thing. Hundred and eight, hundred eight, hundred and seven. So there's uh, probably a two hundred and twenty-five Fahrenheit. That's pretty good. So I don't think the performance has been affected. So I'm going to measure the exhaust temperature. This is in Celsius, degree C. We've got 46, 116 Fahrenheit. I think there's still plenty of heat to recover because that's actually higher than uh, our heat pump gets to. So yeah, interesting to see what it's like after another three meters have been, have been added. This is about a week later. Um, this took a lot longer to 
get here than I'd hoped. Um, basically, waiting for these little bits. These are the connector pipes. <laughs> and all they are is a 24 mil bit of pipe and a couple of Jubilee clips. But yeah, it took 10 days to get in. So that's not great. But anyway, the weather's taken a bit of a turn. So that's why there may be a, a bit of continuity difference between the start of this video and the end of this video because we've actually got snow on the ground. But let's crack on. So same again, I'm just gonna cut this and I'll leave it pretty much like this. I'm gonna join it to the original three meters that we had and do a cold start. So it is really cold. Temperature in here at the moment is 1.8 degrees. So probably worst case scenario, but the idea is, so you can see how mangled that is, I might have to straighten that out. Try and get this in here. This should fit in here. Should, he said. There we go. Going to do this up, put it together roughly. This is just to hold it in place so it doesn't fall apart. just turned the heater on it's just started clicking now um, I've wedged that up because obviously this is going to fill with condensation and, and I'm guessing the longer it is the longer the, the gases can spend in there and cool down so there'd probably be a lot more condensation coming out than we had on the three meter but this is literally start up there's no heat coming out there but obviously it's early days yet the heater sounds like it's doing exactly what it normally does. I've got my gloves on in case I have to straighten this out, but I'm, I'm guessing obviously that's running uphill. Condensation may be an issue, but um, on the finished uh, sand battery, we'll be going downhill all the way. Obviously this goes up. That's building up now. We'll let this run for say 10 to 15, 20 minutes, something like that. And then take some temperature readings and see what it's heat it's producing see if this is restricting the efficiency of it but it sounds okay so far so fingers crossed so we're just over 20 minutes in I'm gonna try and set that up so it's off the ground but right So 30 degrees C, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's at the end of six meters. That's only 20 minutes in. And obviously uh, the joins aren't great because there's no uh, exhaust paste on them. That's something I do for the sand battery. And it's cold out. So that pipe has got as much cold acting. This is probably the wrong way to describe it. But there's a lot of surface area getting chilled by the cold out here. It's probably just over zero degrees Celsius. Um, so the cooling effect is probably a lot more than it'll be when it's in the sand. But even so, there's still 30 degrees coming out of there. So we've still got some heat being effectively wasted after uh, six meters. Makes you wonder how long could you make this? But um, maybe in the future I might increase the length, but I think for now that's long enough so they're 30 degrees, it seems to be staying about that. I'm gonna let it run for another sort of 10, 20 minutes to see if that does improve, but it's gonna have a look indoors. Even though that's, the clamps are tight, gas is still coming out of there. So that's, that just shows you the importance of using exhaust paste on any join in this exhaust, especially if it's inside whatever you're doing. 
because gases can sneak past this. So don't trust these silly little clips and just the pipe itself, it's not good enough. You need some exhaust paste on it to get a proper seal. Because that's there's nothing good about breathing in whatever that is. So run time, yeah, about 25 minutes, allowing say five minutes for warm up, so 20 minutes run time. And still on position five, so 219. So the, the combustion temperature isn't seem to be affected at all. Um, I'll reposition this and we'll check the temperature coming out of the actual hot air vent. So it looks to be very similar to when I did the first part of this video last week. I think we got up to about 100 and, I want to say 108. So that's Celsius. Let me just flip this over to Fahrenheit. Two hundred and twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Still climbing. So yeah, there's. It doesn't seem to be one hundred and ten. Doesn't seem to be affecting the heat output at all by increasing the length of the pipe, um, which is interesting because you it kind of made sense that it would like a restriction, you know. Just coming up for half an hour of run time now. That's better. 31. So yeah, that's, that's half an hour of run time where there's 32 degrees still coming out of that exhaust. Combustion temperature is 220, so it's having no effect on that. And I'll just check this one more time. So the combustion chamber's similar sort of temperature, so it's not affected that. We've still got 32 degrees coming out of the exhaust. And we're on 107, 107, sl still slightly climbing. So the heat output hasn't been affected by using that six meters of pipe, which is good. Um, because like I say, if you go from an inch to an inch and a half, it becomes prohibitively expensive, really. I think it was about 90, 90 quid for six meters and then you've got to get it bent because it's not flexible or well, i can't find a flexible one so if you know of a flexible one let me know and maybe we'll play with that um i think now i'm ready to move on to the the sand battery so that'll be the next video how we put that together because i want to try and figure a way of making out some sort of flange so the pipe just doesn't go through a hole and the sharp edges this stuff's only thin if you look at the See how thin this stuff is. There's nothing to it, there's no strength to it. So I don't want it sort of vibrating and making small holes and letting out all sorts of gases. Um, and I don't think putting the exhaust paste around it will act as any sort of buffer. It's too brittle, it'll just sort of crack that and then you won't know there's a problem it, until it's potentially too late. Hopefully you like this one. If you can do me a favor, you could subscribe, help me grow this channel. Uh, I'll see you on the next one, which should be cutting into that